It's time to check out the yearly Joe Bonamassa model. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's finally here. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's the Joe Bonamassa Cherry SG Custom. That's quite the striking finish on one of these, especially with the white plastics. While I get it out, let's do some history. Joe Bonamassa, if you're not familiar with him, he was a child prodigy who's become a huge touring act with his own music as well as covers, and he has a fantastic guitar collection housed in multiple states known as Nerdville. When it comes to signature guitars, he and Slash are like number one in Gibson and Epiphone's eyes. So every October since at least 2014, there might be a couple of models I missed here, Epiphone and him have partnered up to create a new signature model. And most of them are based on guitars within his collection that have a unique unique story to them. For example, there's an interesting blue Les Paul and a green Les Paul, but then they really started to hit heavy around 2016 with the Epiphone Treasure Firebirds and a few different finishes. There's the famous Amos 58 Flying V, there's the 355 in the Ebony finish, the Norm Burst Epiphone recreation. One of my favorites is the three pickup custom tinted lacquer with Epiphone Tuners Les Paul custom. That's when I first started documenting these things, but then we also had like the 59 Lazarus, and then last year the 62 335 Vibrola. And now for 2023, we're doing a Cherry SG Custom. So you might think, okay, Cherry SG, that's actually a really common finish. Why on earth are they doing this? That's common on standards, not customs. Usually the customs, they're either white or occasionally you'll find an ebony. To find a Cherry Custom is actually a rarity. So this is based on a 1963 SG that he had purchased from a musician, Dwight Pazin, who is the member of the band The Casuals. You probably never heard of him, but he's got a lot of cool photos and old magazine articles showing the guitar, because that's the thing about custom color guitars. You have to prove without a doubt that they weren't refinished at some point in time. So having provenance like that is just awesome. And for me personally, the only thing I didn't find awesome about this release was the price. These have shot up. These are $13.99. Yeah, $1,400. You used to be able to buy Gibson SG standards for that much. Granted, it was a standard, not a custom. So what makes this special enough for that price tag? Is it because we got Gibson USA pickups in here? Unfortunately not. But let's play devil's advocate and see what they are able to offer us. The biggest thing I don't think a lot of people are noticing about this, this is an Epiphone with real Mother of Pearl inlays. Usually these always get pearloid, but this is the real deal stuff. It looks like even the headstock has it. Besides our inlays, it's actually the construction of this. It has the smooth heel contour, which apparently not all these 63 SGs have. I'm not too familiar on that. I know the heel design changes on all of them, but this is apparently a very desirable spec. Kind of swoops in right there, makes it a little bit more comfortable to play higher up. And then we've got the nylon saddles, which are a unique spec with our Maestro Vibrola, which always costs money to put them on. They look super fancy. Do they stay in tune the best? It uh, just depends how you have them set up. We already talked about the special cherry color, but check this out. Klusen Waffle Back Tuners, that's a fancy spec. And uh, we actually do have tinted lacquer over the headstock. It doesn't look like the rest of the guitar is tinted. In fact, it looks kind of strange having the ambered over lacquer here and then the neck is just plain. And then most Epiphones are crafted with a scarf joint for the neck, one or two of them. And a lot of the Bonamassa models, they ditch that to make them a little bit more premium. Lastly, our three-way toggle switch is wired a little bit differently. Usually, the middle position is these two in a kind of quacky out of phase tone. Apparently, they put them in phase, so it's a little bit less quacky, but we'll have to see how that sounds. But on top of that, you also get a hard shell case, so not all Epis get that, and it's special, limited branded, Nerdville CA, Epiphone. I really like how blingy these gold latches are. It really pops. However, it's definitely more of a mustard yellow interior. It's kind of an acquired taste. And as far as case candy, looks like we are getting an Epiphone COA booklet. That's always nice. You can see them there playing one of these. And then our usual Epiphone stickers and hang tags. And also, if you love this guitar but aren't a big fan of Joe Bonamassa or don't want somebody else's name on your guitar, his name is nowhere on this, unless you purchase the limited edition to 300, only available on his website, Vanity Model, as he calls it. So that was a pretty good crash course on what to expect. Let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a slightly deeper dive and then finally get to a playing sample later on. Insider Epi Custom, let's go ahead and look at these pickups. You've got the PB2 in the neck standing for Pro Bucker 2. 
Same one in the middle position, and then the Pro Bucker 3 in the bridge. Technically, you have two neck pickups in this one in one bridge. And you could also double verify that by looking at this. Three pickup guitars can go either way. You can have two necks, you can have two bridges, you can have a different pickup in general. Its factory orientation is two up, one down. Our readings within the circuit, the bridge is 8.47k ohms, just the neck 8.08, .08, and then our middle position for fun, 4.11. Remember, that's those two pickups together. So that's why it reads a bit different. Here you can see the pickup cavities. Looks like we've got the long neck tenon, some sort of a marking in there. Not too much going on in our middle position, but you can see our QR code with matching serial number. And it's wired just like his original. You get two volumes and two tones. And you get the slightly golden reflector knobs. The switch tip is ridiculously white, like that is piercing. Just like your pick guard over here, which is three ply. You've got that black layer in between. And then our tenon cover reads custom, just like his original custom order one. But if you wanted to remove them, that's what it would look like. You'd have some screw holes. If the white's not for you, you could also just replace it with regular black pick guards. I think that would look pretty sweet as well. Here's an up-close look at our bridge. It is the Epiphone Loctone series. The only thing unique about this one is the nylon saddles. Nice that they recreated a period correct spec. And then our beautiful Vibrola, branded Epiphone. If you wanted to remove this, you have two screws on each side right here. That removes the plate, and then you typically have two screws underneath that, and then usually four small ones, two and two. So if you wanted to stop bar this one, just remember, you're gonna have screw holes on the top. Or if you happen to find somebody that can engrave you one that says Gibson or your name or whatever you want on, it's possible to change that front plate out. Moving on from our mahogany body, got that mahogany neck with an ebony fretboard. A special attention, that is real mother of pearl inlays. That has a nice premium feature. However, I wonder if it's wasted on the intended audience. Because I don't feel they tooted their horn enough about that. That's very unique to find on an Epiphone. That's got some great movement. I do notice a few rough spots in your fretboard area right there. Overall, fairly minor stuff. You can definitely see some minor tooling marks. I'm curious if that's actually like glue seepage from the fret setting process. As you see it along quite a few of them. Could also be minor chip out. And I also noticed the pointy part of the binding right here must have got caught by a fret file and got filed off. Regular 12 inch fretboard radius with a 24 3 quarter inch scale. But our nut measure is 1.7 inches. That increases to 2.06 by the 12th. First fret neck depth 0.84 and stay slim 0.91 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the 1st fret and the 12th fret. It's rounded, but I guess it does have a slight flat back to it. It doesn't really have the D shoulders to it, so that's a good thing in my opinion. And I really like the slimline heel join for this. And then our ambered overhead stock. It's such a great effect. I really love that on the 3 pickup Black Beauty that he did a couple of years ago, so I'm glad that it's back here. Our truss rod cover is completely blank, 3 screw variety. You use an Allen key to adjust it, it's just a little bit inside there. Moving on to the back side, if you're curious how many pieces the body is, it is a two-piece center seam. Any other lines you see is just wood grain. This lighting situation helps you see it. It is slightly off-center, not enough that you're really going to notice it. But here's what our electronics look like. They are 500k CTS pots with yellow capacitors. Seems to be wired pretty basically. We've got a large strap button here, and another one at the base of the heel. And we'll just take a second to appreciate this nice seamless heel joint. There's no shelf at all. We do have an interesting wood grain splotch right there. But moving up here, I did indeed remove the stickers just to check the neck. I do believe that to be a whole one-piece neck, so that is a premium spec on an Epiphone. I remember they did that on the Lazarus too. That was kind of a big deal with them. And our Clusen Waffle Pack tuners, which are just cool. And our serial number dating to 2023. Here is something to note though. You can see right here where there is a joining of woods. Again, that's just how vintage SGs are. The body runs up to the back of the heel on the guitar. However, the wood in this area looks so much different from the body's wood. Maybe there is another piece of wood just grafted on there to make it look the part? Because you can see a line of something there, but it could just be that that's where they start to sand it down a different way and then the wood grain starts to look a little bit different. Regardless, the actual neck itself is definitely just one piece. All said and done, this one weighs 7 pounds 9 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds.
so it's about what you expect, kind of a darker neck pickup. The middle position still kind of sounds single coil like. It's got some pretty decent tones for an Epiphone. Let's kick on the dirt. bridge pickup it's nice and bitey <laughs> Now that we know all about the new Epiphone Joe Bonamassa SG Custom, what are my final thoughts? I'm glad they do these every year because he gets to share a tale of one of the guitars in his collection and then they give you the opportunity to buy a slightly cheaper version of it because that's kind of the interesting thing about this is we could try to compare this to a Gibson USA SG Standard and they're very close in price, right? Especially if you go to the used market. But if you have to have that vintage flair, they've done a pretty good job recreating that. I feel like this one kind of appeals to a very, very select buyer pool and maybe not as cool as some of the other ones in the past, but I would definitely put it within like the top five Joe Bonamassa models because it is beautiful. However, I don't think it's gonna take the world by storm like the Amos or that Black Les Paul Custom. And it's mainly because the price this is the most expensive one yet at 1400 bucks. At the same time, it's great because maybe somebody who didn't know that these vintage custom colors existed now does, and it might light a fire in them to later in life want to also collect. So it's good in that aspect, and that's why I like these yearly Joe Bonamassa releases. So if you need one, you can get one at a dealer. They don't seem to be selling out, so maybe you can find a deal. Otherwise, if you're interested in meeting the next owner of this demo model, you can find it on my website at a discount. And I hope you enjoy your new guitar information, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.